Hello students assalamu alaikum welcome back to your online class of islamic studies now for this class we are going to do the rights of fellow human beings from your unit faith and worship this is the last topic of this unit and uh, with this uh, we are going to discuss and revise the method and component of namaz let's start off with the chapter the objective of this chapter is to explain the rights of the people around us the rights of fellow human beings are such an integral and important part of islam that almighty has inquired all human beings about this on the day of the judgment fulfilling duties and observance of the rights of others help perfect our perfect our piety faith and devotion to allah almighty those who are kind and merciful to others and give everyone their due rights gain the blessings and mercy of the almighty the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said have mercy on those who are on this earth the one in the heavens will have mercy on you so in this class uh, we will discuss about the rights of orphans widows travelers non muslim citizens and the citizens the rights of orphans orphans are those whose both parents have passed away or even those who have lost one parent these children should be looked after very well because they tend to become prey to very strong sense of deprivation and loss of self respect in pre islamic days such orphans were treated very unjustly close relatives you suffered their property took possession of their wealth and dispossessed them of their rights the almighty has forbidden this very strictly and has categorized these actions as major sins he has commanded that their wealth and property should be handed over to them when they attain the status of adulthood it is the duty of close relatives to treat orphans well look after them properly make arrangements of their educational and upbringing so that they become good human beings if the orphan is a girl she should be married off to a good man the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the best house is that where an orphan is taken care of well and the worst where where an orphan is treated badly the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave good tidings to the guardian of orphan saying he should, uh, he would be very close to him in paradise he sallallahu alaihi wasallam said i and the guardian of the orphan will be like this in paradise and he joined his forefinger with his middle finger to indicate the extent of closeness once a man complained to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam about the hardness of his heart the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told him care us frequently and lovingly an orphan and feed the poor and needy often often hadith-e nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam says the one who possesses the property and wealth of an orphan will be raised from the grave emitting flames of fire from the mount the rights of widows the almighty has created men and women so that they can be companions in the journey of life taking care of each other however when a husband passes away the wife who is left alone goes through the worst time possible as he has to face many difficulties and problems of life all alone islam commands that such women should be treated well and with consideration in pre islamic days women were uh, women were not treated with respect it was a common practice to ill treat them and they were victims of violence they had no rights of inheritance either a widow has the victim of their even worse traditions and customs but with the advent of islam she was raised from the depths of dishonor and disgraced to a position of honor and esteem and give her due rights widows were given the right 
to remarry if they so wished. It was commanded in the Holy Quran that, And those of you who die and leave wives behind, make a bequest in favor of their wives of maintenance for a year, without turning them out. Then, if they themselves go away, there is no blame on you for what they do of lawful deeds by themselves. And Allah is mighty wise. This verse proves that every man before he dies should make a will standing that one year's maintenance should be given to his wife and she should have the right to stay in the house as long as she wished. Uh, she wished. His relatives and his heirs should not deprive her of her rights and throw her out of the house. If she wishes to get married again and start a new life, she has every right to do so. Our beloved Prophet ﷺ has set precedents for every aspect of our lives. He ﷺ married a widow, Khadija Zillahu and treated her with love and consideration until the end of her days. Now, the rights of non-Muslim citizens. Actually, no, wait, I want to tell you something about the right of widows. Reason Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sallam says a widow or a woman whose husband has left her and she does not remarry in order to bring up her children and suffers hardships in doing so, she and I will be like this, pointing to his forefinger and middle finger held together on the day of judgment. Now let's back to the rights of non-Muslim citizens. Islam has not only protected the rights of Muslims, but instructed that non-Muslims too should be treated, treated well. To cite the hadith of Holy Prophet وسلم, a Muslim who treats a non-Muslim cruelly and usurps his right and burdens him beyond his capacity, such as in the demand for jizya, or forcefully takes away something of his. Then I will stand in the court of Allah Almighty against that Muslim in the case which will be sued and I will stand there as a non-Muslim's lawyer. When Hazrat Khalid made a treaty with the non-Muslims of Hira, he put in a clause promising that when any of them become old, fell prey to any mishap or become poor, then he would be exempt from praying that tax imposed on non-Muslims, Jizya. On the other hand, he and his family would be helped financially from Batul Mal, which is Dar Trayo. The Rights of Travelers A traveler being far away from house is deprived of the homely comforts he is accustomed to. Hence, Islam has picked the rights due to a traveler who may need help in a strange place. It has declared that all possible help should be given. Even in prayers, due to the pressures of traveling in foreign lands, the numbers of rakat are reduced for Muslim travelers. Two are to be offered in place of four. These are called Qasar prayers. It is his right that supplications be made by others to the Almighty for a safe journey to his destination and a safe and sound return home. If Allah forbid he faces some problems or his money is finished and he is short of cash, he should be helped. The cards can be utilized for this purpose. As special instructions have been given about travelers, Hazrat Abu Said is allowed Alanha narrates that once when they were traveling together, the Holy Prophet said, If a person has an extra means of conveyance, he should give it to a traveler who has none of his own. And if he has extra food, this too should be given to the people who do not have any. Ibn Battuta was a famous Muslim tourist who traveled for 23, uh, 23 years purely for the joy of the voyages. The Rights of Citizens The ruler of a Muslim state is responsible for his subjects and he is duty bound to uphold and protect their rights. This is similar to the role of parents who make efforts to satisfy all the basic needs of their children, educate them and provide a good upbringing for them. 
the ruler too should do the same for the well-being of his children as it were and this is a very heavy responsibility in this regard the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam directive uh, directive is the world is a beautiful place and allah has made you his caliph to see how you will act and behave here if fail uh the implication of this hadith is that a love of fame property wealth and power can make one forget his responsibilities and duties one begins to usurp the rights of others deceive and cheat others but he is unaware that these are merely means of trusting uh, testing him and if he fails then we come to know from the following hadith of our prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam what allah almighty has in store for him on the day of judgment if the ruler of muslims die and dies deceiving his subjects the almighty will forbid paradise for him the importance of this responsibility of securing all the rights of citizens can be gauged from uh, the following words of our beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam if the person who has been responsible for looking after the welfare of some people does not take care of them then he will never smell the fragrance of paradise mentioned uh, on the screen are the rights of citizens over their ruler basic needs such as food education health clothes and housing should be available easily livelihoods should be provided in their own areas protection of life property and self respect should be provided establish regular funding for children the aged and jobless people justice for all is essential now let's talk about the al quranic portion uh, for this week you guys have to revise namaz you have to revise the method and learn basically learn the method of namaz and you have to uh, memorize the components of namaz if it is easier for you to memorize the translation please do that because it's important we have already discussed the method component translation explanation everything in previous video so what you have to do if you have missed that video or class here going to this channel American Life in Middle section videos, and then you have to look out for the thumbnail like this, which is titled as Grade Eight Subject Islamic Studies Al Quran Topic Namaz. Now let's talk about your homework. For your homework, you have to do question number one to five from exercise. Learn the chapter and memorize method and components of namaz. Okay, let's. talk about the exercise question number 1 is what are the rights of orphans answer according a hadith of holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam question number 2 is what does the holy quran command us regarding widows question number 3 is what did the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam say regarding the rights of non muslims Question number four is how can we fulfill the rights of travelers? Question number five is how uh, what are the rights of citizens in Islam? What did the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam say about the responsibilities of the ruler? That is it for t- uh, for today, guys, and for this obviously. Okay, uh, one more important fact I would like to tell you. Hazrat Umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu was the first ruler who fixed a regular scholarship for children today all european countries have adopted this law okay uh, that is it uh, guys uh, take care do the work and uh, allah hafiz